All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord have made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you, and thank you so much for tuning in in the backyard with Pastor Perryman. Hey, today is a beautiful day. It's an exciting day, but most of all, it's a lovely day because you're alive, I'm alive, and man, it's the day that we should give God our best praise. So shout out to our Instagram audience, shout out to our Facebook Live audience. Hey, shout out to Miss Michelle McClung who's on this morning. Miss Takesha Brian Hearn is on today. Miss Bambi is on this morning. Miss Willis Francis Hill is the first one on today. Hey, Miss uh, Karen Yates is on. Love you guys, appreciate you. Listen, do me a favor, share, like, tag, invite. Get other people to be on be on In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman this morning. I greatly appreciate it. Hey, I love you guys. I appreciate you. Shout out to Miss Jennifer Smith. I got to give you my pound because you know I love you too. So good to see you today. So listen, y'all, share y'all like, y'all tag. No invite. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard this morning with Pastor Perryman. Hey, it's an exceptional day today. It's a grandiose day. Hey, matter of fact, I don't have any coffee today. It's the day that my church and I have set aside to fast. So we're fasting and praying today for breakthroughs this morning. So you can join in with us, all right? Shout out to Miss Jasmine Johnson. Shout out to Miss Shirley Powell today. Good to see you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, Miss Kelly Johnson is watching this morning. Shout out to you. Thank you so much. So y'all share, share, share. Like, like, like. Tag, tag, tag. Invite, invite, invite. Get other people to come on this morning. Be a part of In the Back Yard with Pastor Perryman, all right? Listen, we're getting ready to get into it today. Uh, man, we're going to have a great time in the Lord. So I pray you got your spiritual ears on, your heart is ready to receive. <laughs> so we're going to go to it this morning. Shout out to Miss Wanda Mayo, who's on this morning. Good to see you this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. But listen, let's get to it today. You know, about, about two years ago, I was watching. Hey, Miss Willa Robinson, good to see you. Tony Johnson, good to see you, man. About two years ago, I was watching um, this 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 interview with uh, uh, with an, a professional basketball player, and uh, they were interviewing this player, and this player was they were talking to him about you in Silicon Valley, and uh, and they were talking to him about how he you you are making investments, you are in the uh, technological capital of the world, and uh, and as they were talking to him, they were talking to him about the investments he's making and, and stuff like that. And they're asking him, what caused you to do that? You know, is it because you're just in the technological capital of the world? And he said, no, nah, I had an experience one night. And he said he was out with some of his friends and he ended up spending $80,000 that night in the club, having fun and all that stuff. And he was enjoying himself. Went home that night, I mean, he was intoxicated, but he had enjoyed himself. But when he woke up the next day and he looked at his bank account, he realized he had spent $80,000 in the club. And he said to himself, that just don't make no sense. So he said, from that point on, he made a decision now that he was not going to spend money like that, but that he was going to make an investment to prepare for his future. <laughs> and I know every one of us here who's watching today have had a it don't make no sense moment. <laughs> Every one of us has done something stupid. Every one of us has done something that just didn't make any sense. Whether you dated the wrong man, whether you bought some stuff that you should not have bought, whether you tried to be something that you should not have been. Every one of us have had a it don't make no sense moment. <laughs> but I got some news for you today. In this season of your life and going into 2020, God is calling you to a place well, you about to do something that just don't make no sense. <laughs> and I know some of you are saying, Pastor, what do you mean? God is calling me to an it don't make no sense moment. He's calling you now to step out in faith to do some things that just don't make no sense. You ain't going to be able to figure it out with your natural mind. You're not going to be able to understand it. But you're going to have to be able to adhere to the voice of God because he's calling you out to make a decision to do something that just don't make no sense. For what he wants you to do, for where you've been called to be, for where he wants to take your business, where he wants to take you personally, you're going to have to step out and do something that just don't make no sense. And you got to get this. This is so important because many times when God compels us to do something, or God calls us to do something 
you and I are not going to be able to comprehend it. And the reason that you and I are not going to be able to comprehend it, because if we could comprehend it, if we could understand it, then we would get the glory out of it. But God is calling you to a place where you cannot get the glory out of this. He has to be the one to get the glory out of this. You're not going to be able to go back and say it was your education that got you here. It was the people that you knew who got you here. You're not going to be able to even say it was your experience that got you here. You are going to have to be able to give God praise because it is him who would have gotten you to this place. So where he's called Calling you to is a place that just don't make no sense to you. You're not going to be able to figure this thing out. You're not going to be able to turn it around on your own. He's calling you to do some things that just don't make no sense. Throughout the Bible, people have it don't make no sense moment. The <laughs> Bible tells the story that Moses now is on the backside of nowhere, tending to his father-in-law's sheep, and all of a sudden he hears the voice of God speak to him out of a burning bush. Scripture tells us that when God speaks to him, he tells him, he says, Moses, I have, I have come down to deliver my people because I've heard their cries by reason of their taskmasters. And he says to Moses, I'm sending you. Now, wait a minute now. That's a, it don't make no sense moment because you just said you heard the cries of your people and you have come down to deliver them but you're going to send me to do it? That just don't make no sense. I don't have the expertise. I don't have the experience. I don't have the skill set to do it. Didn't graduate high school. Don't have a college degree. Born on the wrong side of the tracks. And you're going to send me to deliver your people? You are the very one that God is about to send to do something major in the lives of people. It's not based on whether you're, it's not based on the accolades. You can look at your life like Moses says and say, hey, I'm a stutterer. I stutter. I, you, 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 you do know that I, I, I'm not eloquent of speech and God is saying you're the very one that I want to use you're the one that I'm going to use to deliver my people that's a it don't make no sense moment you got to realize something that you be the one when I listened to a song one time called from DJ Khaled and I heard Justin Bieber on the song he said you're the one I'm the one yeah I'm the one you got to look at yourself and you got to say I be that one I'm that one I be that one that God's going to utilize I be that one that God's going to deliver people I be that one that God's going to use to transform the lives of people I be that one that's going to teach people how to get to their next. I be that one that's going to teach people how to own their own business. I be that one. You got to say it every single day. I be that one. In the midst of it, it don't make no sense moment. You going to be the one. <laughs> I know I know about to preach my old self happy because I look at myself and I have to tell me from time to time, I be the one. I be the one. For, for a long time, when I first came out of Palmdale and, and I, you know, I was teaching Bible study, I used to try to push myself back away from that. And I, I never forget, I, I would say to people, they would ask, where did you come from? Why are you teaching Bible study? You know, all these other people, why are you, doing, why are you letting you teach Bible study? And, and I would say, well, you don't know how long I've been with the ministry. I've been a part of the ministry since the Chatsworth days. You don't know anything about I was in Bible study. I'm doing all this explanation. And then my pastor says to me, son, that's the wrong thing to say. I said, it is? He said, yeah. Well, next time when you get asked that question, tell the people it's because God has chosen you. And I had to change my mentality. I be the one. I be the one. It don't make no sense, but I be the one. And you got to say it every single day. God is calling me to an it don't make no sense moment. And I be that one. I be that one that can change the lives of people. I be that one that can cause people to go to their next. I be that one that can encourage folks. I be that one that can pull people up out of the muck and the miry clay. I be the one. And if you don't get that mindset, you will not be able, <laughs> you'll not be able to be a part of it. It don't make no sense moment. <laughs> Scripture continues to tell us that now all of a sudden here, Moses now is being utilized by God. Scripture tells us that he here he is, he's, he's, he's at the Red Sea. He's been delivered from Pharaoh. He's been brought out of bondage. The children of Israel have been freed and let go out of bondage. And all of a sudden now the Bible said God now has turned the hearts of Pharaoh back on the people that he just delivered. That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. You just freed me from the people, and then you have turned Pharaoh's heart to chase after me? That don't make no sense. And all of a sudden, now, here Moses is. He's hedged in between mountains, and he's in front of the Red Sea. He can't turn around and go backwards because Pharaoh is chasing him. He can't go to the left or the right because he's in between the mountains. He can't go forward because the Red Sea is in front of him. But then he looks up at God, and he says to God, <laughs> we need to cross this thing. How are we going to do? How are we going to make it through this thing? And God said, why stand you here gazing at me? Drive and go forward. I need you to get this. It don't make no sense. How are you going to tell me to walk in the sea? 
That don't make no sense. But it's in the midst of a it don't make no sense moment that your faith will come alive. So all he did was hear what God said and he obeyed what God said. And as soon as he took a step to walk into the Red Sea, the Bible said the Red Sea parted. When you look at it from the book of, of Psalms, the book of Psalms said the Red Sea saw them and they fled. It fled away from them. Why? Because that don't make no sense. When you step out in faith, it will never make sense to you. It will never, you will never be able to comprehend you will never be, under, be able to understand it. God is calling you to a it don't make no sense moment. It's a moment where you will see God thrive, where you will see God do some amazing things. It's a moment where you will thrive in God. It's a moment where you will be able to see God do only what you've been crying and believing him for. It don't make no sense. Scripture tells us that here the children of Israel are out crying and they don't have no water to drink. God speaks to Moses and he tells Moses, cut this tree down there. Throw this tree into the water because the water is bitter. And all of a sudden he throws the tree into the water and the next thing you know, the water becomes drinkable. How can that be? That don't make no sense. It does not make any sense that you can cut a tree down and throw it into the water and the water that was once bitter now becomes sweet. That don't make no sense. But I need you to understand this. It may not make any sense, but it does make faith. There are some things that God is calling you to do in this season of your life that don't make no sense, but it does make faith. What God needs you to do is just to step out and say, you know what? It don't make no sense. But I'm stepping out in this thing. I'm moving out in the midst of all of this because I'm going to see God do some great things. I'm going to see him turn water to wine. I'm going to see him turn bitter water to sweet. I'm going to see him heal people. I'm going to see him raise the dead because it just don't make no sense. That's the place that he wants you in. He wants you at a place where you can't figure this thing out, where you got a scratch in your head moment. You got your shake in your head moment. You can't figure this thing out. And God says, I need you right there because that's the place where you have to trust me. It don't make no sense to you. <laughs> but it does make faith. You got to trust him for some of you. God now will be calling you to move places, move out of the place that you're in and move to another place. And you're saying, but God, that just don't make no sense. You got to understand that God knows exactly where to take you to. <laughs> he knows exactly where to move you to. He knows exactly what to position you at in life. So he's about to call you to move out of a certain place, out of a set place, and remove you and put you in another place. For some of you, you're going to end up moving out of the state. And the reason that you're going to have to move out of the state is not because doors are closing on you, not because people are angry with you and upset with you. It is because God is moving you to a place where you have to meet somebody who will take you to your next. That don't make no sense. God, I got roots right here. That don't make no sense. I've been planted here for years. That don't make no sense. I've been doing this for years. That don't make no sense for me to walk away from this. But you're not realizing that you're not walking away from something. You're walking into something. I need you to get that this morning. You're not walking away from something. You're walking into something. What are you walking into? You're walking into your good life. You're walking into your blessed life. You're walking into your best life. And what God was doing for you in that season of your life. He was utilizing that place as a seed for the harvest that he was going to give you later on. You just didn't know it. And all you, all you, you've been there. You set up shop there. You set roots there. You've been, you've been, you set up, you set up uh, legacies there. But you didn't realize that that place was just a place where you were supposed to sow seed for him to get you to your next. <laughs> it don't make no sense. But it does make faith. <laughs> you're not walking away from something. You're walking into something and you got to get your head held high because you're about to walk into 2020 with a swagger, baby. You got to get yourself together. Got to get your makeup back on. You got to get your clothes back on. Some of you will stop dressing like you used to dress. You got to get back to dressing the way you used to dress and say, hey, man, I'm about to walk into 2020. I'm walking into this thing with a swagger. I'm not going to let nothing hold me back. I'm not going to let nothing stop me. I'm not going to let what the people said about me in my past stop me. I'm I'm not going to let no haters hate on me. I'm going to celebrate why they hate because what God is doing for me, it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense at all. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense how he blessed you like that. <laughs> Everybody else been trying to get to this place and the education couldn't get them there. The expertise couldn't get them there. Their skill set couldn't get them there. But God gave you one idea that did not make no sense and it got you to your neck. Scripture tells us that the widow woman, here she is, she, she, she's about ready to die. Scripture says that the preacher has been sent to her. <laughs> preacher says to her, go, go get me some water to drink. 
And the Bible says that she has no problem with giving him the water. So here's what she does. She's on her way to get the water. And then the preacher says, but listen, but bring me some food to eat too. And she turns around. She says, man of God, <laughs> preacher, look, I don't, I don't have no problem with giving you the water. But this little cake that I got right here, this little oil, this little I got right here, this little flour I got right here, I'm about to make a cake for me and my son. We're going to eat this thing and die. And then the man of God said, uh-uh. Fear not, go do what I just told you to do. And when she obeys what the man of God tells her to do, she goes and makes the cakes and brings it to him first. And the Bible says that in the midst of a famine, her and her child eats all of those years in the midst of a famine. It don't make no sense to sow a seed in a famine situation in your life. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense that you can't afford to pay your light bill. It doesn't make no sense that you can't afford to pay your mortgage. It don't make no sense that you got more bills and you got money. And then all of a sudden God is telling you to give a certain amount of money. That don't make no sense. But what it does is it makes faith. What you're not realizing is what does not make sense to the human mind makes sense to God. So here's what he's doing. He's giving him a, giving her a plan of action that can get her out of her dilemma. She didn't understand that give it to the man of God will get her out of her dilemma. That didn't make no sense to her. But as soon as she got an understanding, as soon as she got clarity, she was able to obey the man of God. And when she put it in his hands, <laughs> everything shifted and turned for her. I got came to tell you today that God is going to call you to do some stuff that just don't make no sense. It may not make any sense, but it does make faith. And I'm telling you, you better get ready for it. it don't make no sense moment. And for some of you, you already are facing a it don't make no sense moment. But what you've been doing is pushing back. You've been pushing back. I can't do that. I'm not going to sow that. I'm not going to obey that. How this going to work? How that's going to work? You got an opportunity in the it don't make no sense moment to miss it or make it. You have an opportunity. If I were you, I would choose to make it. It don't make no sense, but it does make faith. Let's, let's go step. Let's go deeper into this thing. Here, here the angel Gabriel shows up. And he shows up to a 14-year-old girl by the name of Mary. <laughs> I feel like preaching, boy, I'm telling you. He shows up to a 14-year-old girl by the name of Mary. And he tells her that she's highly favored of God. And she's been chosen to give birth to a son <laughs> that's going to change the world. And she said, how can this be? Since I know not a man. What, what she say? That don't make no sense. I can't comprehend that. Can't understand that. Don't, don't, that don't make a bit of sense at all. You trying to tell me I ain't never been with a man, but I'm about to be pregnant to give birth to a Messiah? Come on, man. That don't make no sense. I ain't never been involved with a man. I'm betrothed to this man, and I ain't never given him any. And you telling me I'm about to do this? That don't make no sense. But then the angel says to her that the Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you. He going to come upon you and you going to give birth to the most highest God. And then you going to call his name Emmanuel when she gets clarity, when she gets understanding. She says these words, be it unto me according to your word. It don't make no sense, <laughs> but I got a revelation of it now. And guess what she does? She's been chosen and set apart to give birth to the Messiah Jesus who would transform the world and cause people's lives to be changed. You are saved because she did not miss it in her. <laughs> it don't make no sense moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad today that she did not miss it. Had she had missed it, you and I may not be saved today. And some of you today, you are faced with an it don't make no sense moment. And you're not realizing that that moment is not even about you. That moment is about what God wants to do through you later on in life. It's about humanity being changed through you. It don't make no sense, but it does make faith. <laughs> I'm telling you today, some of you going to have to just go and say, God, be it unto me according to your word. I'm just going to do what you told me to do. I'm going to say what you told me to say. I'm going to do what you just said. It don't make no sense, but it does make faith. <laughs> I now come to somebody this morning. You've been faced with that it don't make no sense moment. <laughs> and you've been wondering how you're going to get out of this, how you're going to come through this, how you're going to overcome this. And you're not realizing that God gives a plan of action that will help you in the midst of it don't make no sense. <laughs> oh, he gives you a plan of action that will take, will take you to your next. you got to be able to say yes to God in this season of your life. It don't make no sense. Watch now. Rich young ruler comes to Jesus, says, good master, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, go keep the commandments. He said, I've done all of those since my youth. Jesus said, yeah, you have. But one thing thou lacking. He said, one thing you lack. Go sell all you have and give to the poor. Can, can you see the rich young ruler sitting up there Lord, like this? That don't make no sense. 
I've been working all of my life to keep the law. I'm good at keeping the law. I've obeyed my parents. I've done everything that I'm supposed to do legally. And here you come, come along telling me that I, I got to go sell all of my possession and then come follow you. That don't make no sense. Watch now. He was faced with the it don't make no sense moment and he missed it. He did not realize that he would be in line to be one of the disciples of Jesus Christ <laughs> who would possibly replace Stephen. He had no clue that would even possibly, I mean, possibly replace Judas. He had no clue. Clue. He missed his opportunity because he couldn't comprehend because to him it made no sense. Listen at this. When you're faced with it don't make no sense, you got to ask God to help you in the midst of all of this. It don't make no sense. Ezekiel is out in the midst of the valley of dry bones. The Bible says God asked the question. He says, Ezekiel, he says, son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel looks at the situation like this. Yeah, that don't make no sense. These bones, are de these people are dead. These bones are dry. How in the world can they live? But Ezekiel, now not knowing what to do, turns to God and he says, Lord, he said, God, you know. <laughs> and some of you, when you're in the midst of that situation, that you don't know what decision to make. You're in the midst of a, I don't, it don't make no sense moment. Rather than miss this thing, you got to ask, you got to say to God, God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Only you know what to do. What shall I do here? And the Bible tells God, the Bible says God speaks to Ezekiel and tells him to speak to the dry bones. <laughs> See, when you don't know what to do, God always knows what to do. In the midst of it, don't make no sense and you can't comprehend and you can't understand. You got to go ask God, what shall I do? And God tells him to speak to the dry bones. And all of a sudden he begins to speak to the dry bones. And can you see bones connected themselves together? <laughs> can you imagine all of these bones coming together in unity and they stand up in the presence of Ezekiel like an army? And God has said, this is what I want you to do. Go preach a message of unity to my people. I'm calling my people back to unity. See, you don't understand that in the midst of it don't make no sense if you miss it. You could have denied folks the unity that they need. For some of you, God has told you to go speak to family members, and you won't do it because you feel like, and they ain't going to hear me. They don't want to have nothing to do with me. I don't like him. I don't like her. And you have missed the moment to get that person saved. I never forget when I first got saved, and I got to get ready to close the deal. I got saved. My brother was saved. My mama was saved. My sister Tina was saved, but my, my sister Dee Dee wasn't saved. And I never forget in a dream. I said, I'm going to witness to my sister to get her saved. And, 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 and then the Lord showed me in a dream a friend of mine. And I said, well, I'm not going to go minister to him first. I'm going to go minister to her. I'm, I'm going to get her saved first. And then God speaks to me and tells me, don't overlook him because of the life that he lived. Here I am. I'm about to overlook him because of the life that he's lived. Who am I to tell God who to minister to or who not to minister to? I was about to miss it. Because I couldn't comprehend. It didn't make no sense for me. Go talk to your sister first. <laughs> but to God, go speak to him first. He needs it the most at this moment. And I was about to miss it. I was about to miss it because I couldn't comprehend. See, what does not make sense to you makes sense to God. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, but it does make faith. You got to be able to trust God when you can't trace him. You got to be able to trust God when you don't understand. You got to be able to trust God when it just don't make no sense. I make no sense. Here I am. I'm living next door to neighbors. We go to church together. I don't like them and they don't like me. I'm newly saved. I ain't been too long. Come off these streets. I still got a little hood in me. Still got a little fight in me. It ain't all dissipated yet. I've been saved maybe six months to a year. And, and I still got some of this. Say something wrong. I might smack you. You understand? I still got some of that in me. And, and here they are. They've been talking about me and talking about my family behind closed doors. My sister's on here. So she kind of got an idea who I'm talking about. And, and then all of a sudden, I'm getting ready to cook a meal. And God tells me, cook a meal for them. Huh? I don't want to cook no meal for them. That don't make no sense. They don't like me. They've been talking about me, been talking about my family, been persecuting us, standing up in church testifying. Instead of, test, instead of, instead of getting a real testimony, they're giving testimonies. Their children have been taken and put in the system, God. Now you, and they've been talking about me and criticizing us from across the group. And you want me to give them a meal? That don't make no sense. So here's what I did. I got it there. Because some of y'all don't know that Reverend, Reverend used to be a cook for the Merritt Hotel because Reverend really can cook. You understand? I went in there and fried me some pork chops up real good. 
got my mash, got my got my, my 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 mashed potatoes. I didn't get any of those instant potatoes out of the box. See, Rep know how to peel his potatoes. You know, back in the back at home, we call them ice potatoes. Rep know how to peel the ice potatoes, wash them up real good, cut them up real good, season them up real good, boil them up real good, mash them up real good with your milk and your butter and your sour cream and chai. Rep know how to do all of that. You understand? So here I am. I'm getting all this together. I decorate the plate. You understand? With the parsley, I decorate the plate. I, I got the I got the stuff and I, I pour gravy on it. You know how you how you fry it. You got to put it in the thing and let the you gotta put it in, in the skillet a little bit and put your onions and gravy in there. You gotta make your homemade gravy. Not this stuff that you get out of the out of the package, you pull it and pour it in the water. No, no, you got to make your own homemade gravy. So here I am. I make the homemade gravy and I'm putting the pork chops in there now. Cause now you know it's seasoned up properly. So I got the pork chops on the plate. I got the mashed potatoes on the plate, got some gravy, and then I got corn on the cob, and I got it looking good. Now, all of a sudden, here I go. I go knock on the door, and I got this big plate for him and his family. Take it over. He looks, and he sees me. He opens the door. I said, man, I just want to get this to you. When I put that in his hand, he said, thank you, brother. We was hungry, man. We ain't had no food. So I gave him something to eat. But when I walked out of their door, I only walked not even not even two feet to get into my own door. When I walked into my own door, God speaks to me. He says, from this day forward, you will never be without food again. You will never be without food. Why is that? Because I just worked the principle. I put seed in the hands of somebody else. And because I put it in their hands, God said, you'll never be without food again. You'll never be hungry another day in your life. And from that day forward, I have never missed a meal. My family has never missed a meal because I followed God in the midst of it. It don't make no sense. It didn't make no sense for me to feed my enemy. It made no sense. For some of you, you don't get this. The Bible is true. The word of God is right. The scripture says, pray for for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. The scripture says, if your, your enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink. That's a principle from God. And because I work the principle, I'll never be without another day in my life. I'll never have to worry about my family being without. I'll never have to worry if we'll ever be hungry. I'll never have to worry about it because in the midst of it, it don't make no sense. I chose to make it and I didn't miss it. <laughs> and some of you, you've been missing it all the time, but God's going to give you another opportunity. To turn it around for you. He's going to give you another opportunity. I'm telling you, he's going to give you another opportunity. He's going to give you another opportunity. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to pass this test. It don't make no sense. <sighs> but you're going to have to pass this test. It don't make no sense. But you got to pass this test. For some of you, your test is on your job. You're dealing with some folk who don't even like you, got issues with you, got problems and, and attitudes towards you. And you thinking that they're really mad at you. But the reality is they're not mad at you. They're mad at themselves and mad at some things that have been going on in their life. And God has been dropping it in your spirit for you to pray for them. And here's what you've been doing. You've been choosing not to pray for them because that don't make no sense. Let me help you today. It don't make no sense, but it does make faith. It's setting you up. God's about to bless your life. He's about to blow your mind. So don't you miss it because it don't make no sense to you. You get there. You pray for the individual. You get there. You forgive the personality. You get there and you pray over the situation before they even show up. You pray over it. You send the word of God there to cause the situation to shift and to turn around. So when you walk in on the scene, you ain't got to worry about this issue. You ain't got to worry about this problem because you spoke the word and it got down to the root cause of the issue. Don't you miss what God has in store for you because it don't make no sense. It's important. It, it's important. It's important for you to comprehend and for you to understand what God is doing for you in this season. It's not really just about you. It's about what he wants to do through you. Lives will be changed. You will be blessed. God never wants you to leave a legacy behind that you yourself does, do not enjoy. <laughs> So many people, when they die, they leave a legacy behind to their children, and their children never appreciate the legacy that they had. Instead of appreciating mama and daddy's house, how mama and daddy struggled to pay 30 years to pay this mortgage off, as soon as mom and daddy go, go off the scene and die, all of a sudden the children come along, and guess what they want to do? They want to sell the house so they can get the money and split the money and get rid of mama and daddy's legacy. You were born in this house. You were raised in this house. Memories are in this house. And now all of a sudden you're about to get rid of your mama and your daddy's legacy. It's because you have no appreciation for it. So listen to this. Don't you do something because it don't make no sense to you. 
Listen to this, people of God. You need to enjoy your legacy before you leave it to somebody. Let me say it to you again. You need to enjoy your legacy before you leave it to somebody. Let me say it one more time. You need to enjoy your legacy before you leave it to somebody who will not appreciate it. They don't understand your struggle. They don't know you understand your hardship. They don't understand the memories that you made in there. They don't understand what you did there. And all of a sudden, they're about to get rid of your legacy and you never had the chance to enjoy it. <laughs> don't you miss your opportunity today because it don't make no sense. <laughs> the Bible is full of people, full of, this, full of things that God has called people to do that didn't make no sense. But it did make faith. <laughs> That's my time right there. I pray y'all were blessed this morning that your life was transformed and changed. Listen, I need y'all to share this with as many people as you can. Tag as many people as you can right now so that your life could be blessed, so that their lives could be blessed, so that their lives could be transformed today. I'm telling you, this message, it don't make no sense. <laughs> but it does make faith. It's going to change some people's lives. <laughs> Hey, shout out to our Instagram audience. Thank y'all so much uh, for being on today. Miss Teresa Wells is on today. Miss Willa Robinson is on. Miss Hines is on. Hey, my friend Bishop Larry Carthy is on today. Hey, my good friend, my good friend all the way in Hawaii chilling with he and his beautiful wife, <laughs> Pastor Sylvester Bell. I think Lady Bell knows that Pastor Bell is a model. So she need to go ahead on and get on board with the team because Pastor Bell is a move man. And because he's a move man, he's a model to the world. <laughs> so shout out, shout out to every one of them. I appreciate you. Hey, Pastor Bell is my dude. That's my guy. Hey, shout out to Miss Valerie Perryman. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much. Lady Bell, you know I'm just playing around now. You know, you, you know you're a supermodel too. Pastor Bell, is. he should be happy that he got you with him. The only reason he was able to even go somewhere because you was with him. <laughs> Let me pray and then I'm getting off here. Shout out to Miss Diane King today. Miss Diane King, I love you. I appreciate you so very much uh, for being on. Listen, if you have never been in Miss Diane King's presence, you are missing something. Let me tell you again, you are missing something if you have not been in Miss King's presence. You leave Miss King's presence, man. You're going to feel happy. You're going to feel joyous. You're going to feel excited. I'm talking about she's going to love on you. Her smile is addictive. you got to be around her. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Shamika Ross, who's on today. Love you, Shamika. Thank you so much for being on. She is the Tiffany Haddish of Itabina, Mississippi. <laughs> Even though she's a Steeler fan. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Johnny Liddell. Good to see you. Miss Latrice is on today. Shout out to you. Thank you so much. Well, listen, before I pray, I got to give somebody their day today. Today is Pastor Bell's Day. It's Pastor Bell's Day and Lady Bell's Day. It is their day. So show them some love. Show them some appreciation. You know we give people their day on here. So show them some love. Give them some hugs, some kisses. Show them some love. It is their day today. We appreciate them, all right? Hey, shout out uh, to Miss Victoria Williams, who's on. Minister L. Tanya is on today. Thank you so much. JL is on today. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. I appreciate you guys. I do, I do, I do. So shout out to you guys. I thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, if I missed you, you know I'm going to go back and say good morning to you. I make an effort to do that because I don't want anybody who ever watches in the backyard with Pastor Perryman to feel unappreciated, to feel like they are not valued. Hey, I love you. And I'm going to always show you love and appreciation, all right? Hey, cannot go off this broadcast without saying good morning to Miss Judy Pitts. She be the bomb. So shout out to Miss Judy Pitts this morning, <laughs> all right? Listen, I'm getting ready to pray today. I'm praying today that God will, will await the spirit of discernment in you, that you will not miss your moment, that you will not miss your opportunity. Miss Tracy Anderson, I love you. Shout out to Minister Kim Simmons. She's the bomb, too. Shout out to her today. She's cooking with good grease, Minister Kim Simmons is. <laughs> Let's get ready to pray today. Listen, I know Shamika Ross is really an undercover San Francisco 49er fan. She does not want anybody to know that. But listen, sweetheart, you, you, know, you know you got a special place in my heart. Wherever I go, the red carpet will always be rolled out for you because you're an undercover 49er fan. I understand that. I got it. So you welcome on this team any day. I know you got your red on right now. Why, nobody can see you. I know. <laughs> Let me pray right now. Let me pray today. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person who's watching me today. I ask in Jesus' name, God, that you will pour your favor out on your people. 
that you would release more benefits on your people today. But most of all, God, give every one of us the spirit of discernment. Awaken that spirit of discernment in us, God, so that we will not miss the moments that you have set before us, God. Even when we enter into a place of confusion that we don't know what to do, help us, God, to keep our eyes on you because we safely trust in you because we know that without you, we can do nothing. You said in your word, God, if we abide in you and your word abide in us, you said we can ask what we will and it shall be done for us. So, God, I just thank you right now in Jesus' name that you're taking your people to another level, oh God. And, Lord, we praise you and we glorify you today. Father, we lift up the country of Belize. We pray for every Belizean citizen today. We ask in Jesus' name, God, that you will pour your favor out on the country. Open new doors for the country, oh God. But I pray in Jesus' name, God, that you will bless the works of the hands of the citizens there, oh God. And Lord, I thank you that even as I'm praying, God, the murder rate comes down, God. Poverty rate comes down now. And God, I thank you for it. Now, Father, we pray for the Delta as a whole. I speak your blessing over the Delta. I speak healing and deliverance throughout the Delta. I speak peace and prosperity throughout the Delta. And God, I thank you that even as I'm praying now, miracle signs and wonders takes place in every household in the Delta. And I thank you for it. Now, Father, I pray for my town, Itabina, Mississippi. I pray for my town's peace and prosperity. I pray for my town's healing and deliverance. But God, I pray for unity in my town. Help my town to be great again, oh God. Send us the resources that we need, oh God, and raise up the right people to lead and to guide in our town, oh God. And Lord, I thank you right now. Father, I pray for all of the pastors who are in my town. I ask in Jesus' name, God, that there will be a spirit of unity and a spirit of oneness with the pastors in my town, God. And I thank you that as I'm praying, God, Every pastor has their budget met and exceeded. And Lord, I give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This sun is starting to come out a little bit more. I thought I was in a good spot. Uh, but hey, we'll be adjusting again tomorrow. But listen, do me a favor. Get your seed in the ground. Get your seed in the ground. Don't turn off. Don't click off now. Get your seed in the ground. Hey, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, if this word has been a blessing to you, get your seed in the ground today. Get it in the ground today. Go to our website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground today. Don't let this day go by without you receiving your breakthrough, all right? So get your seed in the ground. You can click on the online giving button there. You can give your time, your offerings. Hey, if you're sowing because you're watching in the backyard with Pastor Perryman, there is a link there for that. Get that seed in the ground. I'm telling you, this is good ground soil because I did not call this ministry. God did. All right. So, hey, this is the blessed ground. So get your seed in the ground. Don't let this day go by without you sowing. All right. Please don't let it go by. Get your seed in the ground. Hey, if you want to be a part of the We Believe campaign, the We Believe campaign is just simply us raising twenty five thousand dollars by January so that we can move into a bit of moving to a new building. And not only that, but have the things that we need inside of that building. So, hey, I'm encouraging you be a part of this. Be a part of this. All right. Hey, if you want to sow directly to me. Hey, shout out Travis. Good to see you, man. If you want to sow directly to me, you can do it through the Cash App. The Cash App is the dollar sign Pastor Perryman. Again, the Cash App is the dollar sign Pastor Perryman. Get your seed in the ground today. Don't let this day go by. Please don't let it go by. I, pro I promise you, this is a moment for some of you where it don't make any sense for you, but it does make faith. Don't you miss your moment. Don't miss your opportunity for the breakthrough that God has in store for you, all right? Don't miss it. Please don't miss it. Don't miss your opportunity. For those of you who have already sown into this ministry, you know that I've been declaring the thousand-time blessing over you, and I'm going to continuously keep sowing the thousand-time blessing over you, all right? Hey, I love y'all. I appreciate you. Shout out to Miss Marlena Ferguson-Clark, who's on today. Love you. Appreciate you guys so very much. Hey, don't forget all of our in, in the backyard with Pastor Perryman listeners and viewers. You are invited to our Christmas party that's taking place December the 14th. Uh, in Gardena, go to our website, click on our website. You will see the Winter Wonderland um, um, a brochure, a flyer on there. Click on it. Do me a favor, register. It is a free event, but what we want you to do is to register because we need to know how many people are coming so we can have enough food to accommodate people, all right? It's a dressy, casual affair, so we want you to be there and be a part of it. Listen, come there. Let's enjoy, your, enjoy yourself with us. Hey, that's the time where I honor the leaders of my church, those people who have worked in the ministry tirelessly to help us get to where we are. We give out awards and certificates. We give trophies to people uh, who stood out. So listen, come out and celebrate 
but we need you to do that for me. Register for us. Go to our website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Register. Please do that. That helps us to understand how many people are coming so we'll know how much food to have so we can prepare, prepare for your accommodations. All right. So please, please, please do that. It is a free event. When you register, it will give you a, a, an online ticket to be there all right so please 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 register let's be a part all right that's december the 14th it's gonna be lit it's gonna be fire it's gonna be off the chain so we encourage you come on be a part all right love y'all we will see y'all again uh tomorrow morning y'all be blessed in jesus name love y'all